Maddie and the Cupid Killer by Farid Abdelaziz Part 7 As Maddie took the last drag of his cigarette in front of the church, reluctant to go in, Sonny pushed the heavy doors open, looking for him. When he finally spotted him, he approached Maddie. Hey man, can I talk to you for a moment? Said Sonny, seemingly determined. Maddie did not want a full confrontation with him. He had no power over his sister's life choices. But he did not want to be forced to interact with her future husband. Nevertheless, he wanted the whole thing to be over and done. He nodded. I know you don't like me. No, don't deny it. I'm not dumb. He added when he felt Maddie's urge to interrupt him. Before we get married, I want to tell you something. I will take care of Rita, and I'll do everything I can to make her happy. She's everything to me, and I love her more than anything in this world. I I know you lost your parents. And before we get married, I just want your blessing. Maddie looked at him for a long time, then nodded, extending his arm for him to shake. <laughs> you have my blessing. Just take care of her. As he was walking down the street after the wedding was over, he recalled Loretta, standing there in her dress and long veil. She was glowing and looked exactly like their mother in the pictures she would show them from her youth. That's how they both chose to remember her and not the way she was, sick and bedridden at the end. Maybe that guy wasn't bad after all, Maddie thought, his bow untied resting on his chest. His urge to hold on to what was left of his loved ones made him hostile to the good people trying to enter their lives with open hearts. He had simply forgotten how to tell the difference. This is why he didn't like to go to weddings. He was afraid to want this kind of happiness. Love is a mess when it comes unexpectedly, and it already broke his heart once. He simply couldn't handle the chaos again. His fiancée could not adjust to his life and what his job entailed and finally left him. But he was honest enough to admit he didn't stop her from walking away. Their affair was right after the death of their mother, when he completely buried himself in his work. A part of him was relieved that she gave him back the ring. But that was five years ago. As he was turning around the corner of his street, he saw the silhouette of a woman in front of his house. As he moved closer, he recognized Maria. He didn't know why, but he was happy to see her smiling at him that way. When he finally arrived to a halt in front of her, she quietly grabbed his hand, which took him by surprise. He hadn't realized how much he missed a woman's tender touch. She gently squeezed his hand and let go of it, still smiling. She finally said, I just wanted to thank you. It all happened too fast. I didn't have the chance to. I asked your partner and he gave me your address? Of course he did, thought Maddie. There's no need to thank me. It's my job. I'm glad to see you're feeling better. He wanted to look away from her deep blue eyes so he fixated on her cast. How's your arm? I'm sorry, I had to push you down. He finally said. Ah, uh, it just itches, but it's fine. Tell me, why did he choose me? I am not married like the rest of them. You were the last one on his list. I think he kept you as his prize. Maddie finally said. Uh, well, I'm glad you're okay. He added after a while. Have a good day, Maria. As he walked past her, headed to his front door, taken aback, Maria nodded silently, immobile for a moment before walking towards her car. At the top of his steps, 
Maddie stopped short, exhaling deeply, looking down. On a moment's decision, he turned round and ran down the steps, out in the streets until he reached her as she was about to get into her blue Chevrolet. Maria, wait. Uh, I'm sorry, um, I'm not good at this. Would you... Would you like to have dinner with me? Maria stared at him for a moment, then stepped away from her car as he closed the door, returning his gaze with a smile. <laughs>